Bracket the Yahweh, 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 by Shem Yahweh, by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honor as always, them Yah to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who are the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, Madawada, the house of David, the brothers laboring day in and day out, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord Hamashiach Yahweh is at hand. And to the Akim and Agwafim, the brothers and sisters who also listen and believe on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to you I say Shalom as well. So Shalom to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. This is Brother Sakala coming back with another camp, all through the spirit and power of the Most High Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Lord willing, this lesson is edifying for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear through the Rakakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. So I'm back at it again, coming out with another lesson, another camp. And today, you hear the music in the background. It's a, it's a group over here, an exercise group. So, uh, you know, pardon me for the background interruption, but hey, it's all through the spirit. So this is um, this is a, a article I'm gonna bring out here in a second. I'm gonna read from this article, and it's gonna be the, basically the premise of the lesson. As you can see, it says, young black Americans fall under Vodou spell. It says young black Americans, and this is from theguardian.com. Young black Americans fall under Vodou spell. So I'm gonna get into this, this article, and Lord willing edify, you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yavashah. So this article, it says young black Americans fall under Vodou spell. It says thousands of young African Americans are straying off the Christian path in search of their in search for God. Increasingly, they are turning to Yoruba, which they cite as the historical faith of young black America. See, our people are, the scriptures say, destroyed for lack of knowledge. So they believe that these alternative measures, these alternative beliefs, because Christianity ain't working no more as we continue to read, they're turning to any and every measure but the truth. The scriptures tell us that our people are ever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. And this is just another example of that. Continuing on, it says increasingly they are turning to Yoruba, which they cite as the historical faith of young black America. It says African-based religions like Yoruba, Santeria, Kondobli, and, Luke, and, and Lusumi, and Vodou are grounded in the belief that ancestral connections is, is integral to spiritual well-being. Worshippers dance, drum, chant, and recite prayers messengers uh, of God are sometimes believed to visit the bodies of the worshipers. For many black Americans, the experience is more satisfying than the church services of their parents because there's no truth in it in, in Christianity, in the church. If you are in the modern day church, you are finished. You know, there's no truth, you know, in Christianity because the true Christians, which that word Christian just goes back to the followers of the anointed, those who follow Yahweh Shai, starting with the disciples, you know, and the believers, the true Christians are, are, are the Israelites. Those are the only Christians, you know? That term was taken, you know, by the Edomites going back, you know, to the time that they came into, into power right before and during the Renaissance time. They adopted, you know, the, so the, 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 the Christian faith, you know, in replacement for their Greco-Roman pagan theology, which is polytheism, which they believed in multiple gods. That's why they try to bring that and incorporate that with the truth of the Bible. So, which that has no that has no place. So Christianity, as people know it today, you know, is not the truth. And it does not, you know, push forth nor show um, or exemplify what's in the Bible. Continuing on, it says, for many black Americans, the experience is more satisfying than the church services of their parents. This is not an alternative religion, says Dorothy Forby, a Yoruba center administrator in Philadelphia. It says it is not something that is just a fashionable trend at the moment. This is more than just a passing movement. A growing disillusionment with Christianity is only part of the explanation. It says there's a growing perception that if you're black, then this is something that is in your DNA, so that's a perception. The scriptures speak about how our people, you know, 
are deceived by their own vain opinions. You know, and that they go about to establish their own righteousness when you read in the book of Romans 10 and verse 3. So, continuing on, it says, in the U.S., Yoruba has been uh, popularized and pushed as a satanic religion. Ceremonies are he held in underground basements and city apartments. Yet the religion prospers in many metropolitan cities, especially those with large immigrant populations from the Caribbean and Latin America, showing us the rest of you so-called Latinos, you know, and Native Americans. You know, all the tribes are, are pushing forward, you know, follow, following, you know, into these, these other belief structures, but not the truth. Once again, ever learning, but never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. So continuing on, now it is estimated that there are more than 800,000 practicing worshipers worldwide. New York and Miami are two of the religion's largest centers with 300,000 and 70,000 followers respectively. But there are also pockets of Yorubas in cities like Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Seattle, and San Francisco. Many black Americans are finding that Christian churches no longer satisfy their spiritual needs because once again, the truth is not in these churches, you know, which the scriptures will get into that, speaks about, you know, uh, these churches being the harlot houses, you know, where our people go to commit spiritual fornication which is, you know, they go to worship other gods, which this is another, you know, another example of that. It says, the Christian church no longer satisfies their spiritual needs, says Dr. Tracy Huck, an assistant professor in religion at Hafford College in Pennsylvania. It says, there's an absence of people between ages 20 and 45 in the pews. They're leaving and cannot be persuaded to return. See, the people, you know, by and large, are, are leaving the Christian church. It's a mass exodus. There's been many articles that have come out in the last few years, especially during the start of this pandemic, showing you how people are leaving the church in greater and greater numbers because the truth is not, does not reside in the church. They don't have the answers. They're not leading you in the way of righteousness. It says they're leaving and cannot be persuaded to return. Hucks add that while Christian ministers spawned a generation of civil rights activists, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Jesse Jackson included, younger African-Americans associate Christianity with their slavery past, which it is. That's why we get this, the slave Bible came, you know, during that time where they took out, they omitted about 80% of the Bible, you know, to hide the truth, to try to, you know, suppress the truth. That's why you also have, you know, um, something called plantation Christianity, which was the, the, the teaching of Christianity during the time that we were in uh, chattel slavery, you know, from that time on. That's why you got movies like Roots, 12 Years a Slave, you know, um, Mandingo, and many others that chronicle that time. So this is associated because the truth is here showing you that the so-called Christians don't have the truth. That, that this religion is white supremacy and it was set up, you know, to keep our people destroyed, to keep them, you know, um, mentally enslaved and to keep them uh, believing in, 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 a, in, a, in a white so-called Jesus, which our Lord's true name is Yahweh Shai, and to keep our people in the way of wickedness, you see? And keep them not knowing who they are. Because when you open the Bible up and you start reading it, you realize and you see, if, the, if you're in receipt of the Holy Spirit, that, that the Bible, you know, is not the white man's book. He didn't write, he, he didn't write the Bible, because the Bible condemns the so-called white man, which are the Edomites. Continuing on, since many Haitians say Vodou inspired slaves to revolt against um, their French colonial masters, in recent years, white and Asian American people have also joined the movement. New Orleans has its own all-white Yoruba society, and in Bloomington, Illinois, one monthly meeting attracts around 10,000 followers. It says there are Yoruba-based centers that cater exclusively exclusively to gay and lesbian followers who feel <clears throat> ostracized by Christianity, see? So even, you know, even in the midst of it, we see that there's conglomerates of people coming together, but coming together to push forth wickedness. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? So how's our people coming together with, you know, with Moe's and the people of the alphabet community, the, the nasty people? But you see that our people, once again, are in all the ways of the world, except for righteousness. So continuing on, let me close it out. It says, 
uh, are um, exclusively gay and lesbian followers who feel ostracized by Christianity, but animal sacrifice, a Yoruban religious cornerstone, so they sacrifice animals, has provoked the outrage of many animal rights groups. It says, continuing on, um, what it says, uh, let's see. Let's see. Continuing on. Speaking of Santeria, in 1993, Rogers Carras, then president of the American Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, said the sacrifice of animals is not legitimate in the context of modern America. But others include the U.S. Supreme Court, having always agreed in the same year, the court ruled that the town of Hialeah, Florida, couldn't pass a bill preventing animal sacrifice. There have been minimal standards set up for animal slaughtering, says Anna Carlton, a professor at Rutgers University of Law. Unfortunately, these religions don't match it. So you see, they don't have the truth. You know, a lot of our people are, are you know, fastly going into these other alternative belief structures, searching for the truth, you know, but not having the truth. So showing you that only the elect have the truth. So all of this, and I got what I wanted for this article, all of this shows forth what the Bible reinforces to us over and over again. Every time we read the scriptures, you know, it's, it's giving us the understanding, showing us that those that have the truth is the elect, you know? Only the elect have the truth. And everybody else, the scriptures say, is blinded. So, um, this is uh, the book of Romans. I'll start here, 13 and 11, just all through the spirit. It says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. When we read the scripture, we know that, you know, this is the time it's speaking about, which is now. Now is the time to awake out of sleep. And what makes now that time to awake out of sleep? Because the scriptures say, awake thou that sleepest, you know? And what makes now the time is the fact that the, that the truth is here and the prophecies are coming to pass for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. As Yahweh Shah said, blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So it says, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep because this is the time of salvation. It's the time of repentance. It's the time of mercy. So after this time is, is passed, then we'll be in a time of judgment, great judgment. Continue it on. It says, for now is our salvation nearer than what we believe, seeing the awakening of the children of Israel. Ezekiel the 37th chapter is showing forth that our salvation is nearer than what we believed. You know? So this truth is only going to be here for a limited amount of time. But as it says in Psalm or um, Salakia, Isaiah the 55th uh, chapter, where it says that um, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Draw ye, draw ye unto him while he, is yet while he is yet near. Because there's a time coming where the Lord is not going to be, he's not going to be accessible. That the truth is not going to be here. The men of the Lord are not going to be able to give you this truth. So I read that article to segue into the fact um, that, uh, let me get one more precept, that our people are under a spell. Those that can't receive this truth are truly under a spell. Romans 11 and 7, it says, What then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for. So that's why you see Yoruba and like these other belief structures just popping up in the last days are here to continue to, to funnel out the undesirables, those that are not the elect, unto these different ways of thinking, these different belief structures. Read it again, Romans 11 and 7. What then? Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, which are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans. You have not obtained the truth. You know, our people are seeking for the truth, but only the elect can, can receive the truth. You know, the Lord set it up in the spirit where only the elect, you know, can actually hear, perceive, understand, and believe these words. It says, <clears throat> Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for, but the election have obtained it, which is the believers, the Bakarium, those that have been selected to receive this truth. It says, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. The rest were blinded, meaning they didn't, they couldn't get the understanding. You see? So only the elect can obtain the truth. The rest are going to be blinded, meaning they're going to go into Christianity, Islam, black consciousness, so-called, you know, Egyptology. Um, they're going to be free thinkers, Moors, each and every uh, 
way that's in the world. Now let's get that word was blinded. It says when it says and the rest were blinded, it goes back to the word G4456 and it's poro, poro. And that word means to cover with a thick skin, to harden by covering with the callus. They've been callous. First of all, their, their, their pineal glands have been, cal has been calcified. They've been blocked. You know, the angels are blocking them from getting an understanding. It says a metaphor to make the heart dull, their minds, their heart, their spirit is dull. Dull of hearing. The scriptures say that our people are dull of hearing. If they would see with their eyes and believe, you know, with their hearts, that they would be, be healed and be converted. It says to make dull, to make the heart dull, to grow hard, to, to callous, to become dull, to lose the power of understanding. They don't have the power of understanding. And what's that power of understanding that, that they lack? That power of understanding is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of, of this word. You know, where they will be in receipt of it. But because they cannot receive it, it's showing you that they are truly blinded. You know? Another precept that comes to mind is 2 Ezra, or Salakia, 2 Corinthians 4, and verse 3. It says, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And those that are lost are those that the Lord said that the, will be of the multitude that will perish because they, because they were born in vain. So, to have this truth, you know, is to have life, you know, and to have, you know, a true shot at salvation. You know, to have a true shot at immortality and that protection, that divine protection that we're going to need here as we continue to go further down the tunnel, which is Jacob's trouble. So now... Let's jump into it. I read the article to show how you Israelites are into any and everything but the truth, which shows shows forth this open the scripture I'm gonna bring going into the book of Wisdom of Solomon. I brought that article out to highlight this here Wisdom of Solomon, which is the book of Wisdom of Solomon, the fourth chapter. And I'm gonna go right to the point, right to the 12th verse. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12, it says, For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. I read it again. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12, it says, For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. So, to be bewitched, let's get that word real quick. It says, The bewitching of naughtiness. To be bewitched, the definition of the word bewitched, when you look it up, common definition, it means to cast a spell over. So our people have been bewitched. That's the bewitching of naughtiness. That spell has been what wickedness for our people to be in the ways of wickedness. You see, for them to be, you know, under that heavy delusion, you know, to be under that heavy delusion, which that heavy delusion, you know, is that 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 spell that's been cast on them by these modern day witches and warlocks, you know, which are these which are these Edomites in high positions. Scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, these devil worshipers, these, these satanic, demonic people that's on this planet, you know, which are you Edomites or the head of that. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12, once again, for the bewitching of naughtiness. So the word bewitching again, to be bewitched means to cast a spell over. So the spell that our people have been, has been cast over them, it says to influence or to affect injuriously by witchcraft. See, that's the witchcraft that they're under. A lot of people believe that these, this is all, you know, this is, these are fables. But spells are being cast on our people. And it's all in the spirit. You know, to not know that you are, that you are a, a, an Israelite, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, you have been uh, put under strong, heavy delusion, which that's that spell that it speaks about in the book of 2 Thessalonians. Let's get that before I go back. So let's show you that this is in the scriptures. This is, you know, this is the Lord making clear in these last days how it would be. A little bit more on that spell. Now it says, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, going into the bewitching, or for a spell to be cast upon, to be put under witchcraft. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 9, it says, even him, speaking of the coming of Esau, even him, which is the coming of the wicked, whose coming is after the workings of Satan. See, he's just like Satan. He's the, he's the adversary to truth, you know? He's the physical counterpart and embodiment of wickedness on the earth. He's the man of sin, the actual man on the earth, which are the Edomites. Even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And those powers and signs and lying, lying wonders is, is the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked. He has the power. He sits in the power seat. 
the signs and line wonders is, you know, getting into, you know, his technology, you know, his witchcraft, you know, that covering cast that he has over all people, the scriptures say, you know, so, which he's used uh, deception, that deception being quenched in these last days. Verse 10, it says, with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, that's how he comes, with all deception and wickedness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. So two thirds is gonna perish along with the heathen and the wicked are gonna perish because they, they didn't receive the love of the truth. Because this truth is love. This is the real love, you know, the love of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh the love for his people, which it starts with his word, with his promises, with his law, and, and, and with faith in his words. It says, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. That's how simple it is. Two thirds are gonna perish because they're not gonna come back to receiving the love of the truth. It says that they might be saved. So those that, that come back and hear those words, it, it, it's gonna to be to the saving of their souls. Those that, that hear and believe and, and have the faith unto the end, you know? I did a good, uh, did a lesson today, pretty good lesson. It was going into, you gotta fight for the right. And what's that right? You gotta fight for the right, which that right is righteousness, you know? Which, which embodies salvation, you know? It embodies um, immortality, the kingdom of heaven, all things that are good. So you gotta fight for the right. And in that video that I did earlier today, in fighting for the right, it gets into fighting for righteousness, to earnestly contend for the faith. Because the Lord said, who's gonna stand up for him against the evil doors, against the workers of iniquity? So we gotta fight for the right, for the right to be of the elect. So, continuing on, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusions. See, that's, the, that's the, those that's going into the different religions, the different beliefs, the, the ways of the world, those that are fully entrenched and engulfed in the world. And for this cause, the Most High shall send them strong delusion. Those that are two-thirds are in the ways of the world. They, they have been given a strong delusion that they should believe a lie and a lie is not believing in the truth. If you believe in anything but the truth, that's a lie. Because the scriptures tell you there's no lie of the truth. Verse 12, that they all might be damned, mean given over to damnation, destroyed, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So two thirds are gonna be destroyed because they didn't believe in the truth, but they had pleasure in, in taking on the ways of the world, not considering the prophets and the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12, for the bewitching of naughtiness, it says, doth obscure things that are honest, and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. And our people are the simple, and they are simple-minded. So that bewitching, once again, is to be cast, is, is to have a, a spell cast over, to influence, to affect injuriously by witchcraft, to attract someone or something by seduction. See, our people have been seduced. So to be bewitched also goes into being seduced. So being spiritually seduced, those that are in the ways of this world, which the, the, the article is going into Yoruba and Santeria and all these different things that it says so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans have been taking on more and more. It, that, you know, the, the, these different ways of living and believing are growing more and more because people don't believe in the church no more. You know, because the church is a false prophet. The Lord's taking the spirit completely out of there and destroying it. And he's gonna ultimately destroy it you know, when you start putting these, these false pastors to death, when you read in um, Zechariah the 13th chapter. Now, continuing on, some synonyms for um, to be bewitched is to enchant, uh, to fascinate. It says to trick, to lure, to entice. So to be, to be, to be seduced, to be enticed, to be tricked, to be lured. To be enticed to do what? To take on these be these belief structures, these other religions, is to be enticed to sin, to be lured in, you know, by some gimmick or some some ideological way of thinking or whatever it may be. So our people have been attracted, you know, and been it's been seduced, which is what this verse is getting into. Once again, Wisdom of Solomon 4 and 12, the, for the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest, you know, it says, which is which is the minds of the people, you know? They've been, they've been, it's been given over to the obscurity that has drawn them into the ways of wickedness. 
It says, in the wandering of concupiscence, concupiscence is a strong sexual lust and desire. So to, to be wandering, you know, and be seduced by, the, by this whore Babylon and, and, and by, you know, the wine of Babylon, it's got our people in, into everything but the truth. Only that remnant is receiving that truth. This is the wandering of concupiscence. So that strong lust and desire, that seduction, doth undermine the simple mind. And you read the Bible, the Lord said, spoke, speaking of his people, you know, that they are simple, that they are foolish, that they are stupid. Showing you that our people are are are, are the simple. Because the scriptures tell you with good words and fair speeches, do they deceive the hearts of the simple? That's all of the ways of the world. Esau, Edom, and all, all of these, you know, um, these things that have blinded the minds of our people from coming into the truth. Now, why is that important? Let's get a few more precepts. Because it talked about, you know, to attract someone or something by seduction, right? To be tricked, to be lured, to be enticed. Now let's get let's get another precept going into how they've been enticed to believe these things that are not true. Because it's ultimately the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh The Lord, you know, didn't call and didn't ordain two thirds to the wedding fest, you know. So those that have not been called into that are, are those that are being given over to the world. Revelation 2 and 20, it says, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth her, herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Read it again. Revelation 2 and 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Now, this is the Lord. You know, when you read Revelation in the second uh, chapter and third chapter, it goes into the churches. So the churches today is speaking about the believers, the elect. So it says, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, and Jezebel here can be likened unto Babylon, you know, the, 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 the whore, the great whore, you know, Babylon, the great whore, who sitteth upon many waters, who, who seduces the nations, who, um, the scriptures say, have given the nations wine, and the, and the people have become mad. It says, um, because thou suffers that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, and, and, and America sits, you know, as a as a, a, a beacon, a beacon of light and righteousness. That's what the whole Statue of Liberty thing is about. They, they promote and propagate, you know, propaganda that pushes forth them being righteous and them being for all the people and, you know, um, wanting to be here for all the nations. They're going around with the jab campaign, you know, giving people the Marcus Beasley and the Marcus Houston, giving them the jab, saying they're doing this to help the world, so on and so forth. That's them speaking as if they're uh, righteous coming in, into the, the, the lot of a, of a prophet, which is a, a, a light, uh, a... Um, a lot of, uh, of one that is righteous. It says to teach and to, and to, to seduce my service, which two thirds of the nation of Israel are Israelites. So they're out doing what? Seducing our people. Like it said, you know, the wandering of concupiscence, those undermine the simple mind. So those that are being, those that are being seduced, you know, once again, it's speaking about the two thirds, you know, they're being seduced. It says to commit fornication, which that's going into unlawful sex, which today that would be idolatry, would be spiritual fornication. We look up fornication and, and adultery, it's, it goes into it being spiritual as well. So spiritual uh, fornication and adultery, which would be believing in other gods, worshiping other gods, taking on the ways of the world, not keeping the laws, statutes and commandments. So continuing on, and to eat things sacrificed unto gods, to be in the ways of the world. So. Let's continue on with the fact that our people are being seduced, you know, two thirds are being seduced into the ways of the world, you know? Um, so you go into that word seduce here and it goes into the word G4105, you go into the word seduce, it goes into the word planao, and it means to deceive, to go astray, to wander, to be out of the way um, to be out of the way, to wander out of the way, to lead away from the truth, to lead into error, to lead into error, to be led aside from the path of virtue, so to be taken away from righteousness, 
Babylon has seduced our people to be taken away from the righteous way of living, you know, which is living, you know, according to the doctrine of life, which is his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Bible. So now it says to once again, to wonder, to be led away from the truth. So that's what goes on with all of these different belief structures, all, all our people who refuse to come back to the truth. You know, they're being led astray. They're wondering, you know, meaning they have lost their way. Now, let's show that real quick through a precept. Our people are being led astray. They're wondering. This is the book of Jeremiah 50 and 6. It says, my people, speaking of the Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, my people have been a lost sheep. See, it was what has made them lost. They have been scattered. They have been scattered. Let's get that further. Jeremiah, let's come back to this. Scriptures say in Jeremiah 50 and 6, my people have been a lost sheep. Now, what has made our people be lost? You know, what has made them blinded, as we read earlier? Those that are blinded, those that are lost. Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, which is all, all of these false prophets, these Christian pastors, and all of these guys like Minister Farrakhan, you know, these entertainers, these athletes, all of these people, you know, who have a platform to teach our people righteousness, but continue to, to show them and promote the ways of the world. You know, all of these entertainers, the athletes, just telling our people to go, you know, and, and, and take the, 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 the MAR um, and take the, uh, the jab. And it's, it's a prelude to the fact that they're going to be the same ones telling our people to take the MAR, you know what, to take the MOTB. These are the same ones. Let's read it again. Woe unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. These are all the false prophets. Sayeth the Lord Yahweh. Therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, power of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people. It says, you have scattered my flock. And you scattered them, meaning you've taken them out of the way of truth. It says, you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. You have not given them the truth. That's how they have not visited, you know, uh, the Lord's people. The two-thirds that, that they that are blinded it says and have not visited them behold i will visit upon you the evil of your doings saith the lord yahweh the lord said he's going to visit upon all the false prophets that are not you know out giving our people the truth and guiding and directing them in the way of righteousness you know he's going to visit them i mean they're going to be a part of that destruction they're going to be the ones that's going to be left here to burn you know in babylon the great so let's go back jeremiah 50 and 6 it says, my people have been a lost sheep. See, because they've been scattered by the false prophets, you know, by the ways of the world. It says, my people have been a lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray, to err once again. That going astray, which means to be seduced in essence, means to be led away, to be led away from the truth, to be led aside from the path of virtue, to be taken away from righteousness. It says, they have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains and these are the all the other uh, um, other nations all the places where people are at and have been they've turned to the mountains they've turned to the to the places where they're at which is what isaiah the 30th chapter and isaiah the 31st chapter you know and they're speaking clearly about how our people have went and they trust in egypt they trust in the pressure they trust in their oppressors it says and have toned turned them away on the mountains they have gone from mountain to hill which is the nations going into the other governments, which are the nations. They have forgotten their resting place. They don't have a resting place no more. So that's why I started with that opening article showing.